In this video, I'm going to be sharing the five most important technical concepts that you need to keep in mind if you want to clear your first ever network engineering interview. So make sure you watch this video till the very end. How's it going guys and welcome to another video. As always, if you're new here, do hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and also check my previous videos out. Over the past three to four years, I have given a lot of network engineering, network security interviews. And there are a few things that are very common from a technical question perspective on every interview that I ever gave. Whether it was my first ever IT support interview or even my most recent network security interview, there were a few questions that stayed the same across the board. In this video, I'm gonna be speaking about these questions and try and break them down so that you know what exactly you should expect if you are attempting your first ever network engineering interview. There are quite a few questions that are very similar, but what I'm gonna try and do is, is I will try and club them into the five most important ones and present them in such a way that they're also easy for you to remember and understand. The first one being life of a packet. The life of a packet is one of the most important questions when it comes to any network engineering interview. And the reason I say that is because when an individual who's attempting the interview tries to answer the question, it gives the interviewer a very good insight into how much the person knows about networking in general. Reason being the life of a packet touches upon various aspects and domains within network engineering. Let's first understand what exactly is this life of a packet. So the interviewer will, for example, ask you a question that let's say you are trying to access a web page on Facebook servers, let's say www.facebook.com. What is the whole sequence of events that takes place right from the moment you type facebook.com on your browser to you actually getting your Facebook feed on your computer? This is a brilliant way of testing a candidate's knowledge about networking because Based on how deep the candidate goes into answering the question, it can tell the interviewer what exactly the candidate knows about routing, switching, DNS, DHCP, address resolution protocol, transport layer concepts, etc. Now, if you want to know how to answer this question exactly, I've already made a video on this a couple of years ago, and the link to that is going to be in the description. So do check it out. The reason I made this video in the first place was because most of the interviewers did ask me this question when I was attempting these interviews. And look, if I was to also interview a candidate, I would probably start off with the life of a packet question, because as I said, it sets the tone for the interview and it lets the interviewer know what level of questions should be asked. And even with answering this question, right, you can go completely in depth or you can try and touch upon very high level concepts of this answer. But as I said, do check the video out that I made and that video also has a five step process to answer this question. So do check it out and um, let me know in the comment section if you need any help understanding anything with regards to that. The second thing that you need to know is network hierarchies. Network hierarchies from a physical design perspective. For example, you may be asked by the interviewer, what are the different types of network hierarchies? Example being a collapsed core architecture or a core distribution access level architecture, etc. And while they may be very straightforward when asking you this question, it's also very common that they may ask you this question in a scenario. So they may come up to you and say, help us design a network for a campus or an organization with five floors and 250 employees. What is the approach you're going to take when it comes to the physical designing of the network? And this is where you'll have to speak about network architectures and network hierarchies. Making a decision whether you want to go with a collapsed core architecture, for example, keeping into consideration how many employees are within the organization, what is the peak traffic, peak volume, how many devices you need to accommodate for, are things that the interviewer will want to know. And look, this is a hypothetical scenario. So what they're trying to gauge is what are the different areas you touch upon when you're trying to answer the question. Therefore, knowing about what a collapsed core architecture is, what is a core layer, what is a distribution layer, what are the devices that are part of the access layer, what are the functions of each of these layers are very essential. Hence, if you're able to cover these in your interview prep, 
I'm pretty sure that when the question is asked, you'll be able to answer it correctly and confidently. The next thing that you need to know is routing and switching. Routing and switching is basically bread and butter for a network engineer. When it comes to routing, what I highly advise is that don't try and master every routing protocol, rather narrow down to one routing protocol and you can let the interviewer know that this is what you know and then they can question you based on that protocol itself. Now, I would advise that you don't go with a Cisco proprietary protocol, that's EIGRP, rather do OSPF or BGP, which is more of an industry standard routing protocol. And whichever one you choose, make sure you go a little bit in depth when it comes to answering the questions around the routing protocol, as well as actually preparing for it before the interview. And this involves things like the type of routing protocol, timers, best path selection criteria, neighbor establishment, etc. When it comes to switching, please ensure that you know about VLANs because VLANs constitutes a major part of switching and how you use VLANs, access ports, trunk ports, how you configure a network with VLANs is also something that will come your way a lot during the interview. Another thing that you need to know within switching is spanning tree protocol, the different types of STPs and how spanning tree protocol helps improve the overall performance of a network. The fourth thing to know is transport layer port numbers. Port numbers associated with DNS, HTTP, HTTPS, um, Telnet, SSH, etc. Most of the times what people do is that when they're preparing for a network engineer interview, they'll only focus on, let's say, Cisco centric things like routing or switching or Cisco iOS commands, etc. But networking is much more than that. And you need to know other layers as well, other than just routing and switching. And Transport layer port numbers are an essential part of this too. I can say this very confidently that every interview I've attempted so far did have questions about the well-known port numbers for some of the protocols. Hence, as part of your prep, you can just Google what are the well-known protocols and their port numbers and just try and memorize a few of them. The fifth and final thing that you need to know, and this is not exactly technical, but it is scenario based questions in which you'll have to apply your technical knowledge. Nowadays, I've seen this trend where interviewers ask questions through a scenario. So they'll want to know how exactly you're approaching a problem, not just by asking you what are technical definitions or technical concepts, rather they'll try and mix that into a scenario based question. An example would be, let's say an employer in an organization cannot access a web page which is a well-known application for the organization, what are the steps you are going to take to troubleshoot the issue and ultimately fix the problem as well. I strongly believe that when it comes to troubleshooting, you need to follow the OSI model going from bottom layer to the top layer, but everyone has their own approaches when it comes to troubleshooting issues. But what I'm trying to say is, is that prepare scenario based questions. There are a lot of uh, links on Google which I'm going to be listing in the description. So do check them out. And they have some good scenarios which take into consideration technical concepts and your technical knowledge and help you answer these scenario questions better. So there you go, guys. These were the five questions that I strongly believe will help you prepare for your network engineering interview better. I really hope this video is helpful. And as always, do hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, comment what you think about the videos that I make. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Oh,